All right. Good morning, everybody. That's uh, looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. Just uh, so thankful that we can start the day together. And uh, if you uh, if you hear some background noise this morning, I don't know if you'll hear it or not, but somewhere down the street here, they're running chainsaws. So um, I don't know. You might hear it or you might not. I don't know. But uh, sure is great to see you this morning. Hoping you're having a good day so far. Uh, good morning, Charlotte. It's great to see you uh, here with us. And, and good morning, uh, Phil and Miss Peggy. Um, so glad y'all could could join in with us tonight. Uh, this morning, I'm st- tonight. I'm still in in uh, last night's mode. But uh, uh, boy, I really enjoyed that uh, class last night. Uh, I really enjoyed doing that with Eli. And I'm really excited about working with him and and, uh, just have a really good feeling uh, about things to to come. So um, uh, just just very excited about that this morning. If you have your Bibles handy, let's open them to Matthew 7. And here in a moment, we're going to read verse 24 through verse 27. But I know that's a passage that will be very familiar to most of you. I was thinking about this passage because the other day I was reading a news story. It said, I'm going to read some of this. It's just a few, just a little bit. Uh, and it said that as many as 34,000 homes in one U.S. state are at risk of collapse due to faulty foundations. Without realizing it, a, uh, a concrete company pulled stone from a quarry that was laced with a mineral that over time uh, causes concrete to to crack and disintegrate. So the foundations of nearly 600 homes have already uh, crumbled into pieces. And it is uh, very likely that that number is going to continue to escalate uh, as time goes on. Having a, a faulty foundation Uh, can lead to very serious problems. And what's true of building a house is, of course, even more more true of building a life. So that's why I wanted to go to Matthew 7, 24 through 27. I instantly thought about that passage after reading that story. Because that's where Jesus said that whoever hears his sayings and does them I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat that house and it did not fall for it was founded on a rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain descended, the floods came The winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. So, Jesus here is talking about the foundation on which we we build our lives. And building on a rock-solid foundation requires two things. That we listen to what Jesus has taught, which we do today by opening Scripture spending time with it. We go to church. We open our hearts to the preaching of it. Uh, You know, situations like this where we have an opportunity to get together and open it and share it, Uh, but also in our private reading. There are lots of opportunities for us to uh, expose ourselves to what Jesus taught in the Scripture. And then as we do that, we do it with a mindset of how can I put this into practice in my life? I want to I want to live this. I'm not going to be perfect at doing that. No one is, but I I want to give the best that I have to give to live this in my life. And and Jesus said that the person that commits himself to doing that is building his life on a rock. And that's not easy work. It's a whole lot easier and quicker to just go out on the sand and just throw up a house. But it's not going to stand. If you're going to build on a rock, you have to dig down to that that bedrock. Uh, That that takes that's that takes hard work. But it's worth it because uh, when you build on a rock, you're building on something that will stand. 
And, and Jesus said that the one who's building his life on what I taught and is striving to live it in his life or her life, then when the storm comes, that, that person's life is going to stand. Because no matter who you are, eventually there comes a time when the rain is going to fall and the flood is going to rise and the wind is going to blow against you. We've seen that this week in our community. We've been dealing with it for over almost a year with this pandemic. Uh, and beyond that, I know that all of you have faced personal trials and tragedies in your lives when the rain was falling on you, the, the flood was rising and you were feeling overwhelmed, it felt like life was, was beating against you like the wind of a storm. But when you have, you have the Lord uh, teaching in your heart, it gives you something solid to hold on to, something that will hold you together even when it feels like everything's falling apart. You know, uh, as I, sometimes I read this passage, I, th I think about generations that went before us. I think about the generation that, that faced the Great Depression, that faced World War II, all of those young men who traveled to Europe and Japan to fight against that, that evil, all of the people here who who sacrificed to, uh, to help in that campaign. That generation, uh, Tom Brokaw called them the greatest ge generation. They, they withstood probably the greatest test that our country has, has ever seen. But one of the common factors in that generation was their strong faith in God, their, their devotion to um, living out his word, you know, in, in their lives. And it just goes to show you when you, you've built your life on a rock, uh, it can withstand some tremendous things. So uh, Jesus urges us here, to hear these sayings of his and, and to look for ways to put them into practice in our lives. Because without that, we're building on the sand. And in some ways, life may be easier, but uh, we're, we're, our, our great downfall is just, just waiting for us somewhere down the road. So my word of encouragement to us for today, uh, as we approach this day and as we approach the rest of this week, is just to make sure that we're building our lives on a solid foundation. I have an idea that you, you're doing that. You, you wouldn't have joined in with us this morning if you weren't interested in doing that. So I hope that our study today will just be an encouragement to you to keep on keeping on uh, as you strive for that. Let's all bow together and let's have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, our, our God, our Father in heaven, you are that rock on which we want to build our lives because we know that you are all powerful, you are all wise, you are perfect in every way. And we're so grateful, Lord, for the love that you've given us, for the guidance that you give us in your word, for the physical blessings you provide, and most of all, for the spiritual blessings that you provide. And we're so thankful, Lord, for your son and the love that was shown for us when he came to this earth and when he died on that cross. We're thankful for the hope that we have in his resurrection, Lord. And when we take all of these things in, Lord, we, we have such a desire to listen to you, to follow you, to build our lives on the solid rock of what you have given us in the Bible. Today, Lord, help us to do that. Help us as we strive to do that. And we just pray, Lord, that you will continue to be with the families of, of Chance Black and um, Zach Grooms. We also pray for, the, for uh, their, their friend uh, who was with them. And, and we just pray, Lord, knowing that all of these people are facing so many challenges in relation to this uh, this tragedy and we, we 
have them so deeply in our hearts, Lord, we ask you to please continue to be with them and bring them peace and bring them comfort. Lord, we continue to pray for your blessing as we deal with this pandemic. We pray that the vaccines that are being administered will be helpful in, in uh, uh, rounding the curve with, with this uh, pandemic. Just pray, Lord, that you will keep us safe and keep us healthy and help us, Lord, to love one another and support each other through this time. And I know that each one who's listening today has their own personal challenges that they're going through, and I ask for your blessings upon each one as you know their need. Lord, we continue to pray for the forgiveness of our sins and for strength as we strive to do your will. For we recognize, Father, that, that the kingdom, the power, and the glory all belongs to you. So please lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody. Uh, so great to be with you this morning. Uh, good morning, Jerry. Good morning, Eva. Good morning, Pat. Good morning, uh, Stacy. I'm so thankful for each of you. And uh, hope you have a great day and great weekend. Look forward to getting back together next Tuesday for another dose of encouragement. Till then, God bless. Love you all. <music>